Hello everyone, I'm Ji Hui Li, I'm a third year astro grad student at Caltech. In this video, I want to give a brief introduction about our recent work on the survival of cool clouds in the circling black media. This work is supervised by Professor Phil Hopkins, and our collaborators include Jonathan Squire and Kamil Hamos. So the motivation of this work is pretty straightforward. As shown in this picture, in the circling black media, which is the gaseous matter outside of galaxies or inside of dark matter halos, Many absorption and emission line studies have shown that cool clouds have outflow speeds of hundreds of kilometers per second. However, on the theoretical side, it is expected that these cool clouds are destroyed by hydrodynamical instabilities in relatively short times. So how can these clouds survive long enough to get accelerated to high velocities in the hot medium? That is the question we want to answer in this work. So this is the brief description of our simulation setup. Um, as shown in this figure, we put a spherical H1 cloud of 24 Kelvin in pressure equilibrium with the hot medium. And we varied four parameters in total, uh, the cloud size, the cloud relative velocity, and the ambient temperature and hydrodynamic density of the medium. We then solved a set of fluid equations using code Gizmo with different physics incorporated, such as Radiative cooling, uh, magnetic fields, conduction, etc. So for each of our simulation runs, we ended up getting a series of density maps at different times. And this is an example. You can see the red part is the cloud, and the black background is the ambient medium. With these density maps, we can define a cloud mass, which is the mass above a certain density threshold, and a cloud lifetime. This plot shows some examples of the normalized cloud mass evolution curves of different sized clouds. So having derived all these cloud lifetimes, we identified uh, different regimes according to different cloud column densities and ambient temperatures, as shown in this plot. We found that uh, regimes 1, 2, and 3 are either unphysical or irrelevant to our study. In the fourth regime, we find that the gas near the cloud was faster than the cloud lifetime, so the cloud would actually grow in mass. In the fifth regime, uh, the clouds get destroyed eventually, and we are mostly interested in this regime. So in this cloud destruction regime, we fitted our simulated cloud lifetimes to four different uh, physical parameters, assuming power laws. And we, we found that the fitted lifetimes are pretty close to 10 times the cloud quotient time, TCC module of small correction factor F2. And F2 has a residual dependence on uh, the cloud velocity. And we also found that this residual dependence is much weaker for clouds uh, that have higher velocities or they are in a cooler medium. So why is that? So we found that the, the effect of thermal conduction should play a major role in this, um, which is the heat transport process via electron collisions. And this convection process tends to evaporate the cloud. So uh, based on whether the maximum heat flux is reached, we separate convection into two different regimes, uh, unsaturated versus saturated. And we found that two important parameters, which are the saturation parameter sigma naught and the cloud evaporation time T that are very important here. And they take very different values in these two regimes. Uh, as shown on this plot, in the unsaturated regime, the cloud is destroyed by instabilities, and the lifetime is directly proportional to TCC. However, in the saturated conduction regime, we found that the cloud is destroyed by evaporation due to conduction. And here, the lifetime should be pro proportional to the TCC times the cloud velocity. So this explains the residual dependence on cloud velocity that we observed before. Also, the clouds with a lower ambient temperature or higher velocity, they have a weaker residual dependence on the uh, cloud velocity because uh, they basically all lie in this unsaturated convection region. In addition to this, we also study the effects of other physics such as magnetic fields, viscosity, and turbulence, but their effects turn out to be minor. Uh, for more details, feel free to check out our paper. Thank you for watching.